Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and we're back with that uh, Corsair Vengeance LPX uh, 2400CL14 uh, memory kit. This time, as you can clearly see, it's running on X570. It's the X570i Strix, and it is running a lot faster than it was running on Z490, and also it is, uh, well, pretty damn stable, as you can tell. This is a 1000% mem test, zero errors, so yeah. Also, new mem test version is pretty damn cool. Um, it also has a uh, USB boot, boot, like, well, I actually have the deluxe version, so there's also a option to have it run off of a USB stick, so you don't risk screwing up your operating system. Um, which, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited to try that out. But anyway, um, so yeah, mem, mem test, you know, is, is running great. Um, you might be wondering what kind of settings we're, I'm running this time around. So on Z490, right, the, these sticks topped out at 3466. And at the time, I figured that would probably be some kind of weird compatibility issue. And probably it is possible to work around it. I'm just not that great at memory overclocking. So my solution to the problem is to just use a completely different CPU and motherboard because, yeah, anyway. So now the memory, as you can see, is at 3866. Now I'm not running um, 1933 uh infinity fabric because this is a ryzen 5 3600 which like you you could see that right here right this is a this is a 3600 so i'm not running the the infinity fabric at 1933 i'm not even running at a 1900 it's just at 1800 i didn't really feel like fighting the cpu for stability this was mostly about testing the capabilities of these memory sticks and yeah like this is a 2400 cl14 memory kit doing 3866 that's uh a CL20. It's actually still significantly faster. Even with the desynced Infinity Fabric, it was actually, if you synchronize your Infinity Fabric at 2400 megahertz, like, it's going to be bad. Like, I'm just going to say it's, it's going to be bad. <laughs> like, don't do that. Um, like, if you are legit stuck running at 2400, run the Infinity Fabric at 1800. It'll give you better performance than running it at, in sync at 2400. Anyway, so yeah, the RAM's at 3866. Um, the timings are 20, 24, 18, 36, 58. So uh, no, they're not minimized, um, though actually, so cast latency and TRCD are basically minimized. Um, cast latency, I tested 18, it wasn't stable. I tested uh, 22 TRCD, that wasn't stable. I didn't test tw uh, 19 and 23 because um, I was lazy. So there's a chance that like 23 TRCD would work and with gear down, without gear, actually I'm, I am without gear down mode because we're on 2T command rate. So I could have tested 19. I don't know why I didn't. Anyway, there's a chance that 19 would have worked, um, which wouldn't have really made too much of a difference in terms of performance, but yeah, that, that would have worked. So, you know, big frequency increase. We're running what, like 1400 over the rated specification of this, of this kit. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. So another 400 megahertz over what I was able to do on, uh, and uh, I mean 400 mega transfers above what I was able to do on Z490. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so that's running. Oh, and I forgot to mention this is a 2x4 gig memory kit. Also, I didn't disable the global seed states and, and the mouse is being sticky occasionally, um, which I think is the global C states. I'm not sure what AGSA this, this board is currently on. Uh, now, I will be running Geekbench to show you the performance. Unfortunately, uh, there's a weird problem on this OS where if I have the date set... Well, actually, we, we can try run Geekbench. I don't think it'll run. Um, like, it'll, it'll just crash out at one point. Um, and then I'll have to set it to 2041 and then it'll work. And I'm going to reinstall the OS because I, I think, like... Like I'm gonna reinstall the OS on a proper on on a system with proper timekeeping first, and then I'm gonna reinstall everything. I mean, I already reinstalled the OS a bunch of times. Well, yeah, actually, I installed Windows 10 like twice in the recently. Basically, I was having massive issues trying to get Memtest to run, and it turns out that was just because the date was all screwed up. Um, wait, is it just gonna work now? Really? Yay, I don't have to screw with the date anymore. <laughs> okay, we can keep this OS. Oh, man. On one of the previous reboots, I had to set the date to 2041 in order to get Geekbench to run. Which was really stupid. 
Oh, and the issue I was having with MemTest was that it was the the OS was on the year 2041 for some reason, which a lot of people have been noticing that in my videos, which like I don't really like I didn't ever change the like I never changed the date and I, it's not really something I pay attention to. So yeah, and, and then I found out that's actually making MemTest not run, and that, that's when I started caring about it. Anyway, so, yeah, um, Geekbench, you know, 7,500, not a particularly amazing score, general, but not terrible. Way, way, way faster than what this memory normally get. Like, if you run this memory on auto, that is way faster than auto. Um, so, yeah. So that's 7500 Geekbench. Um, now let's take an actual look at the settings that I'm running. Now this is not super optimized because I spent so much time troubleshooting why isn't Memtest running that, uh, you know, like w once I finally got stuff to start working, I was already really tired of trying to get stuff to work. <laughs> um, and unfortunate, and I and then I spent a lot of time trying to get DDR4000 to work. Right, like uh, DDR4-4000. Like, I was trying to get 4000 to work for ages. Um, and, uh, yeah, that doesn't. Um, the closest I got to getting 4000 to work was uh, 1.8 volts with CL20. No, I think it was CL22. And that would do, like, 15 or 30% before it would get an error. But it would still get an error, so that doesn't count. Um... Anyway, so I ended up at 3866 because unlike 4000, 3866 actually works. So here's the settings. A little bit high on the voltage at 1.55 volts, but eh, it's a super cheap memory kit. I'm not really too concerned about it. Um, also, it is really very stable. And it does scale all the way to like 1.8 volts. Like it, the stability kept improving. When, when I was at 4000, I, as more voltage that I rammed into it, the more stable it was. Admittedly, that didn't really mean much because it was still inevitably erroring out. But yeah, um... So that's kind of the thing is just like, uh, so honestly, like, would I daily this? Actually, probably yes, because this RAM is super cheap. And so if it starts degrading, like, it, I think I paid 30 quid for this RAM. So I wouldn't really be too worried about running 1.55 volts into it. Um, anyway, um, because the Infinity Fabric's just at 1800, I'm just running CCD and iodi voltage at 1 volt, which uh, according to the BIOS is apparently pretty high. But according to me is kind of like, eh. I think on auto they default to like 0.9 volts or something, which for 1800 most of the time should still be fine. But there's no harm at running them uh, at 1 volt each. Uh, CPU's at 1.3 volts, which is just for the basic 4.1 gigahertz overclock. I'd actually probably run it a little bit... Like, I'd, I wanted to run like 4... Like, this chip can do 4.2, maybe even 4.25, but the air cooler I have on there and the thermal paste application is not great um and i know it's not great because every time i take off that heat sink the, the like you can see parts of the th cpu that haven't been like got it like haven't gotten covered in thermal paste so yeah um the cooling situation right now like i'm testing memory i'm not here for cpu stability so <laughs> that's why we're not running super aggressive cpu settings um anyway let's take a look at the actual memory settings so we're running 20 cl20 24 18 18 36 for the primaries, uh, you know, 36 TRAS for the primaries, TRC's at 58. This might go a little bit lower, but not way lower. And I know this because eventually, like, I, I'd, I'd, I'd have the system straight up not post a few times just lowering TRC. Um, anyway, TRRDs are 4, 5, 16. There's a pretty decent chance it would have run at 4, 4, 16, but also the performance effect from going from 4, 5, 16 to 4, 4, 16 isn't really that big. Um, and in some workloads, actually, I think 4, 5, 4, 5 16 or 4, 6, 16 can sometimes perform better um, in certain workloads, which, like, it shouldn't because, like, the, the, running 4, 4, 16, it doesn't, like, violate any JDEC thing. Like, as far as I know, for some really low-speed DDR4 uh, JDEC settings, 4, 4, 16 is actually, like, an official specification, I think, for, like, DDR4 1866. Um which is super mega slow, but at that point, yeah, you can run 4.4.16. And you can't run less than 4.4.16 because the registers don't go lower than that. Like, you can try set it below, like, well, you can't. On, on this BIOS, you can't. There are some other boards that'll let you set, like, a TRDS of 1, and it's just, like, like the board doesn't just doesn't apply it. 
Um, I didn't touch these because those seem to cause massive instability anytime I messed with them. TWR at 12, I think it might do 10, but that might have actually been unstable. Um, I left the SCLs alone, which uh, might not have been necessary. There's a decent chance those would do 4-4, four, four, maybe even 2-2, two, two, but... Eh, you know what? I'm I'm just happy that it finished freaking mem test. Like I've spent way too much time trying to get this done. Uh, TRFC 400. It should maybe go a little bit lower, but not much lower. Like this is actually pretty close to ma like minimized in terms of that timing. Uh, and then the rest of them are just on auto because like TCWLs at 18, which is basically what I'd punch in anyway. Uh, RTP. I've tried lowering that. It gets pretty upset when you mess with that one, so I've given up on it. Um, the rest of these timings are basically irrelevant, um, or more like there's no point setting them. TCKE is autoing to one, proc ODTs at 40. This is actually necessary. Um, when I was trying to, and I'm not sure it's necessary for 3866, and also proc ODT will depend on your motherboard to some extent, and, like, there's no one value of proc ODT works best all the time. But at least for getting DDR4000 working, or at least like booting, because it wasn't really stable. But in order to boot 4000, I needed 40 ohm proc ODT. There, there's no other option for running uh, four. Th well, 43.6 uh, 43 also works, but anything else doesn't. Um, and 43.6 I don't think was optimal. Um, I, it seemed to be a little bit less stable. But uh, yeah, like 4,000 was just generally really unstable, so that wasn't going anywhere. We're on 2T command rate. I'm not sure that's actually necessary. There's a chance this would run at 1T command rate, but I'm late. Like, I'm, I'm again, I spent way too much time trying to get this to freaking run. Um, and that turned out to be a date issue, but that, like, this is not really, you know, this doesn't matter. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with this setup's issues. Um, so anyway, uh, gear down mode's disabled, because how else would you get 2T command rate? 2T command rate is actually kind of significant for performance. It depends on what workload, like what benchmark you're running. Some benchmarks are more sensitive to it than others. Um, but uh, 2T is also way more stable than 1T command rate, and it can be more stable than running like gear down mode enabled. So 2T, like if you, like 2T is you absolutely require stability above all else. Uh, gear down mode is like, I want speed, right? Like having enabled gear down mode and auto, like auto is like, I, I want some, like, it's like a halfway step between 2T command rate and 1T command rate. And then gear down mode disabled 1T is as fast as it gets, but it's also the most, like th this, depending on your memory setup and your motherboard, this is potentially going to need a lot of fine tuning in order to not spit out random errors in mem test. Um... Anyway, and then everything else auto because the board does a perfectly good job of all the other settings automatically. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I guess I could show you 4000 actually, like, booting up. Um, the thing is, we're, I think we just need a bit more voltage for that. Just gonna, and so the cool news is the whatever memory chip is, is on these sticks, these are Corsair version 3.22, so... From what I've heard, apparently this should be Micron Revision F, um, 4 gigabit Revision F, and uh, yeah, but it seems to scale, like it scales with voltage from as far as I can tell. So what we're actually going to try to do, we're going to do like 16, this isn't going to be very stable at all, but it does scale with voltage, so just need that a bit higher, 4... And we're actually not going to... Yeah, I'm not going to touch anything else. And we're actually going to go all the way to 1.8. Um, I guess I could have had the troubleshooting LEDs for this moment. Oh, well. The, the white one means it worked. <laughs> Unless it gets stuck on the white one, in which case it's like your settings are not quite there yet. Now, the, the annoying thing with this memory for me has been that, like, it also really likes to blue screen, like, get, like, there, there's a lot of settings where it'll be, like, it'll boot up, but it won't get into Windows. There's a lot of those. 
um, which is always, you know, very pleasant to deal with memory kits that, I, like, I like RAM that just doesn't work at all, right? Because <laughs> settings that kind of work are the kinds of settings that waste the most most of your time, because you're sitting there trying to figure out, is this even, like, remote, like, is this viable? And the answer to that can be, often be no, but it takes forever to figure that out, um, because it keeps almost running. Right, and when it's almost running, it's like, oh, what if I just change one more setting? And it still doesn't help anything. Um, and chow, four thousand should be able to finish Geekbench. Forty-one thirty-three is able to boot. Forty-two sixty-six doesn't even post. Forty-one thirty-three shouldn't get into Windows though. Um, oh, okay, we passed Dykstra. That, that's the that's the scary one for memory stability. Is the Dijkstra test, and that one hits the memory controller really quite hard, and the memory at the same time. I mean, you know, it's like if the memory controller is moving around a lot of data, where is it coming from? Well, from the memory, probably. Um, and. That's a pass. And now we do almost 8,000 points. I, I, like, if I actually had the Infinity Fabric doing 1,900 instead of 1,800, which this CPU is capable of on a good day, um, then we'd actually be over 8,000 at this point. Um, so. Come on, boot, reboot faster. Also, it likes to blue screen on the restart. Some, well, not regularly, but I have had it blue screen as it's restarting quite quite a few times during testing. So anyway, that worked pretty good. And so if you go up to 4133, and even if you loosen it out... So yeah, I think CRCD23 would have eight worked at 3866. The, the thing is, is like there's a big difference between... Like, because Geekbench will still run even if you have a memory overclock that will spew out hundreds of errors in memtest. Or at least it will it can still sometimes run. Um, and, and so that's kind of the, the thing is just like, yeah, the, the ability to finish Geekbench is not much of a stability indicator. Anyway, so we're going to try 4133, slightly loosened out. This really shouldn't be able to get into Windows. It will boot up, though. Or at least it should boot up. Yeah, so you can see yellow, red, white. Come on, where's where's our green? We get our green and blue screen in there. Oh, well, I count this as a blue screen because it goes to preparing automatic repair. Um, we didn't crash out. Yeah, there we go. Blue screen. See, called it. So... At 4133, um, it boots, but it's completely unstable, um, which is fun. And at 4266, it no longer boots. Um, and I've not found any solution for any of this. In fact, at 4000, it's already so incredibly unstable that I'm surprised it gets into Windows so often. Um, but yeah, once you go up to... Well, actually, I've not tried a 4200. I wonder if it'll still, still boot that. Um... Not like I have many settings to play with on this motherboard. Um, I'm trying to think of something to do. Well, we can try 20. Not that I think it'll do anything. And we're going to put TRC, TRFC on auto and those two on auto as well. And yeah, 4200 just straight up doesn't work either. So that's that's pretty much the limit for these. It's going to... Yeah, that's the limit. It's actually going to manage to recover though, which is which is nice. This board's not too bad about recovering. Yeah, so it recovered. It, it's just such a shame that Asus didn't properly implement the memory voltages on this board. <laughs> By which I mean the memory voltage goes up to 1.8 volts if you don't modify the motherboard a lot, and the VTT DDR control is implemented halfway. So, yeah, that's not great. Um, anyway... Let's power this down, 
and uh, let's take a look at those memory sticks. I mean, you've already, if you've watched the Z490 video with these, then you've already seen them, but uh, hey, for ending the video, I still want to pull them up. So, yeah. Vengeance LPX. And, oh wait, I did have it the right way around the first time. Cool. Oh, did I overdo the zoom? I definitely overdid the zoom. And nailed it. So yeah, 2400 CL14. 1.2 volts version 3.22. And it'll do 3866 if you just punch in loose enough timings. And it will perform way, way, way better than 2400, which I just realized I didn't demonstrate that it performs way better than 2400. Um, like, who? Like, do you really want to see 5,500 points in Geekbench? Because a 2400 CL14 spits out 5,500 points in Geekbench, which is about 2,000 points less than what the 3866 settings get. And that's with the Infinity Fabric desynced and me being lazy about minimizing the timings. So honestly, if you were running it at like 1900, like, yeah, if you were running 1900 in sync, you should be able to get 8K. Um, or just under 8K should be possible on these. So, yeah. Um, now I'm, now I'm, I mean, I'm still like, I, I was really hoping to get a, a you know, like 20, 2400 stick that'll do like, 4800 um but considering like i had no idea what memory chip this is i've never worked with this memory chip before and considering how cheap this ram was and well just the spec of it right like you can't really be disappointed that it overclocked by what is it 1400 megahertz also it's not just me even like even the well the motherboards and the memory vendors do it right where, where it's like yeah that's ddr4 2400 megahertz not mega transfers anyway um, so, yeah, that, that's it. Like, if you have a, you know, like, you do, basically the main point of me doing this with these memory sticks and the whole reason I picked them up was, like, to show that you don't need a crazy high, like, you don't, just because your memory kit is rated for 2400 CL16 or 2414 or 2400 whatever else doesn't mean it can't go over 3000. Um, it just mean well, actually, no, like, it, it literally just, it doesn't really mean much of anything, because basically what happens with these super low, uh, speed bins is they're not bins, they just, like, any memory chip that comes through the factory floor that day that happens to, like, that works is probably gonna end up on a stick like this, right, that's, that's why there's so much overclocking headroom on the really... Well, that's not entirely true. There are some memory chips that literally wall at like 3200 CL16. And so if you get one of those on a 2400 kit, I guess, you know, it's like, okay, that's kind of a win, right? You go from 2400 to 3200. That's not too bad. But if you buy a 3200 CL16 kit with one of those 3200, like one of those memory chips that doesn't really go above 3200, well, then yeah, um, that kind of sucks. Um, and actually, if you go far back enough in DDR4 memory chips, there were DDR4 memory chips that getting them even to DDR4 3000 was incredibly difficult. Um, and like not impossible, but very, very, very hard. Um, and not all of them would do it. Like some of them definitely wouldn't. Some of them get stuck at like 2666, 2800. Um, but some of them would do 3000. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, like, ju just because you, you bought, you know, cheap low-end RAM doesn't mean it can't overclock. It, like, it, it, <laughs> like, it can actually just not overclock, but a lot of it will still be very capable in terms of overclocking, because a, a lot of this stuff, like, it's still made with, the, a lot of it's, a lot of this stuff is made with the exact same memory chips as, like, the higher bin, like, the higher speed kits, Except these aren't sorted for quality at all, so your timings tend to suck. The, you know, that that kind of thing. Like they're they're kind of they're all over the place basically. So yeah. Anyway, I'll have another you know low speed memory kit coming soon, and that one is supposed to have memory chips which should be far, far more capable than this stuff right here. So I'm very excited to play with that when when it shows up. Um, Anyway, yeah, uh, that's it for the video. Um, 
thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, uh, comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. Uh, speaking of the Patreon, thank you to the patrons for, like, the motherboard, the memory stick, the CPU, the power, actually the entire system in this case. Like, I'm serious about that. This whole system, like, this whole setup right here is, is thanks to the patrons. Um, as as well as, you know, people who buy the merch off of Teespring. So, yeah, there's AHOC shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch, and that's available through the Teespring store. There's a link to that down in the description as well. And uh, yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.